Hello and let's talk about English footballer Marcus Rashford and his fascinating work with Meals for School Children. The 22-year-old Manchester United footballer launched a campaign called End Child Food Poverty. In June, Rashford had led the campaign to raise £20 million to provide meals for around 3 million children from disadvantaged backgrounds. His active campaign forced the government in July to extend the free schools meal scheme for children during the holidays. Now, Rashford has continued to push this agenda and has won a lot of popular support for this campaign. Meanwhile, the UK government set a disgraceful example recently when it voted against a motion to extend this scheme till Easter next year. This led Rashford to launch the campaign where he is advocating an expanded version of the scheme. Now, it still remains to be seen how the campaign will pan out. But for now, it has led to a lot of praise for Rashford as well as serious discussions on the, mid, on the free meal scheme, on poverty and on education of children as a whole. We talked to NewsClick's Leslie Xavier about this scheme as well as the situation in India where there's a similar scheme called the Midday Meal Scheme. We talk about how this scheme functions, the role of sportspersons in promoting social agendas such as these and how do Indian sportspersons fare. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. So the story of Marcus Rashford is uh, gaining a lot of attention across the world. Even Indian newspapers have been reporting it. And it's actually a very inspiring story because we have this young footballer actually uh, making, in, uh, in some senses, really making change despite the whole system being rigged against what he has been working for. We saw what the parliament did. And of course, there's a long tradition of conservative governments cutting down on expenditure, even vital expenditure in the name of some random policy called austerity. But what uh, Marcus Rashford and the people around him have done is really inspiring. So could you maybe talk a bit about the footballer himself and the kind of work he's been doing? So Marcus is, uh, I mean, of course, he has been awarded the MBE uh, for what it's worth, whatever the effort. But uh, but it's clear where it comes from. So Marcus uh, uh, grew up within the system where he benefited a little from. He, he, he was from an impoverished family. Uh, his mother and he himself, when they when they were volunteering at the food bank and uh, recently or during lockdown, they kept talking about the past and how they struggled and how. A, a, a single a single meal that they would get from, from 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 school or from from the bank or wherever they would that that made a huge difference and of course he has been very vocal about the role that nutrition plays in a child's health i mean not just molding him to become a footballer or any professional athlete but in general their well-being their growth as 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 future citizens as healthy citizens so the, in, in that regard also that uh, that's very impo important that uh, a child's nutrition at that uh, critical age where he is growing right. both both mentally and physically uh, it's 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 very important so his his entire uh, campaign which was end child uh, food poverty uh, was 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 around this and so uh, in july he may he, he happened to garner enough support and enough attention to get the british government to agree to continue uh, with the with providing the meals for the children through the summer holidays and into the into into fall, but now he wanted to extend that campaign and that's when he, he started. He, he, he in fact in his online uh, drive he got five hundred thousand uh, thousand people signing the petition, urging the British government to continue the support uh, for providing meals for for children from the poorer sections till next March. Right. through winter critical period again cold weather yeah. uh, holidays and uh, there won't be i mean obviously the schools uh, children won't be going to the schools as such so and the pandemic is raging as we speak so it uh, it was important but then as as you mentioned uh, at, uh, during the introduction they uh, turned it down citing various reasons citing the expenditure budgetary constraints whatever but uh, uh, to the surprise of even Rashford, more than 100 organizations, including city councils and local bodies and uh, private organizations, fast food chains, uh, charity organizations, many many individuals in their own capacity, they have all come forward in support of this initiative and they have pledged uh, money, pledged uh, resources uh, uh, towards mayor running this campaign. And uh, it's 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 heartening to see that, and it's 
also uh, heartening to see a sports person coming forward and this has figured a quite a discussion in the uk as well because obviously the ruling party and the and the people surrounding the uh, the party they have been critical of it and someone has I mean, pointed out saying that rashford should stick to football play football <laughs> but that's that he has been doing beautifully i mean right. he's a, he is one of the youngest I mean, one of the young strikers for Manchester United as well as England, and he's doing his job there really well. But the point is, if you are a footballer or if you are a IT professional or a teacher or any any profession for that matter, does it mean that you just stick to your profession and don't don't get involved in any any anything that happens around you in the society? No, right? And why why is it that when a sports person does that, and sports person with I mean, you you understand the impact that he had now. So this we are talking about a sports person with a with a larger reach who could make a difference. He made a difference, and and the uh, the moment that Rashford started, it has I mean it has gotten a global appeal, exactly. and hopefully that would reflect into similar movements, similar understanding, and even similar initiative from government. It's not just the sports person has to has to come up. Maybe the governments can themselves. Take cognizance and probably act, uh, taking this as an example. So that's that's the larger impact that Rashford has, and it all comes from the fact that the basic of understanding that what this means to the future of humankind. So that's 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 the basic understanding that I I just wish that the leaders had. Absolutely right, and in this context, of course, uh, India has a parallel in terms of the scheme, at least if not sports persons, uh, their midday meal scheme, which is. Of vital importance across the country, millions of uh, children actually getting a proper education because of that, and it has a much larger social role also. And we've uh, seen discussions about it at various points of time. Many states not doing so well. So, uh, what do you think about that as well? So yeah, well, I'll just take a personal anecdote in this this matter. The importance of of midday meal when you when you mentioned that. I myself was a teacher to start with, much before becoming a journalist. But yeah, the, this goes much uh, behind. Uh, it goes to the uh, when my mother and my uncles were all all students, and this I'm talking about in the 60s, uh, late late 50s, 60s. So uh, they studied in a government school in in Fort Kochi, and uh, uh, six siblings, and uh, not very well off family wise uh, right. so all six of them used to go to school because and they will go with that small vessel mm -hmm. because there was a midday meal there was kanji that is available there they would be giving it to all the students right. in the government school and uh, my mother and my grandmother used to say these stories that uh, they would all they won't eat from the school they would all bring it back home and they will put it in a single pot and then divide among the family and then have that meal and evening of course uh, the father comes back and probably enough money would have been saved to get the evening meal done at home itself mm -hmm. so that that's 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 how they, that's the, how they survived childhood that's how right. they got their education as well because right. that's a very valid reason to go to school for many and i am uh, in a way it's 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 saddening in a way to see that 40 years i mean 40 50 60 years down the road uh, the situation is the same in, 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 in a lot of parts of the country where uh, students go to school because there is there is one time meal available for them over there and education is a corollary ideally it should be the other way around right. but uh, but that's that's the reality we are we are talking about mm -hmm. and uh, so the last couple of months there have been many media houses who have done stories around the midday meal and how the lockdown has affected affected the uh distribution of food for students because obviously schools are not open so where would they get get this so we ourselves at at news click did this story a couple of weeks back alim in fact and uh, we were looking at up and certain districts in up especially the right. backward districts where where the tribal belt and scheduled caste tribe belt and uh, districts like gonda in fact and uh, it's it's uh, with the it's uh, it paints a very bleak picture because ever since lockdown ever since march uh, the kids haven't received any uh, assistance any uh, assistance as far as food is concerned as far Absolutely. as meal is concerned right. so that uh, 
uh, that is one district and then i happen to also read a couple of reports that came out in economic times and this i mean this was in maharashtra the uh, in uh, the kids who were quoted were from maharashtra and they themselves said uh, again the same picture and uh, they said that we used to go uh, i mean I, i was reminded of my mother talking about it like uh, and that was like 50 years back uh, i mean uh, 50 years back so they were talking about how it was very important for them to go to school because they used to get this kichdi or whatever that is provided over there and at the same time so what has happened is that in march in april the central government they announced that uh, and they urged they had a virtual meeting with all the state education ministers and they urged the state governments to take charge and ensure that this midday meal program continues through the lockdown for the for the for the period of the lockdown so uh, and this is a center slash state project the midday meal it's it's shared the expenses are shared but the implementation falls squarely on the state government so and ever since that and i this morning i happened to talk to a couple of uh, old acquaintances of mine from kerala who are government teachers and one of them in fact happened to uh, used to be in the committee for for midday meals in ernakulam district and uh, so he was mentioning that uh, after the directive came from the state government about ensuring that uh, the kids get get their ration get their quota packets were made dry ration so grain uh, uh, sugar jaggery and all the stuff that is required for them to uh, make a meal out of it was provided in in fixed packets and they were kept ready at the school and the registered students they i mean of course they they were contacted via phone numbers or right uh, whatever means that they have even even the network of uh, uh, the uh il kutum which is the local network mm-hmm. that they have in that was also used where the lady right. volunteers and i mean made sure that the information goes to the families that this is there you say you go and collect following of course the social social distancing norms or right, right, right. whatever that was prevalent at the time and so that was ensured and that uh, through the three months of lockdown and beyond that as well these were provided for the students and at the, and provided and uh, i tried to dig deeper whether this was just around the city or the bigger towns right. and then the remoter areas did did it happen so this luckily in kerala the understanding that this this is not a freebie but also a right that is prevalent among the among the population so they know that this is there and it's a right and they need to get it and the school needs to provide it and also i was given a insight into how this this network this midday school uh, project works and within the school capacity itself the management is involved uh, also the pta is involved right. the, the local political leaders are involved in 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 ensuring that the uh, and, and this this is across not just government schools but also aided schools who are part of the project so uh, because of this participation of of people within the society and also uh, politicians or social leaders within that area it 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 has so happened that in kerala and i'm citing kerala as an example giving the contrasting picture of other states uh, because uh, it's been implemented in a in a clear cut manner over right, there right. and and it's it's just a matter of and what i could perceive is that it's just a matter of will Mm-hmm. it's uh, and nothing beyond that it's just a matter of uh, exercising that will and exercising a network and exercising a system but the problem is that this system had to be in place before and you can implement you can set it in motion During after the lockdown pandemic, uh, after the lockdown you can't set it in motion and that's where that's where kerala has an advantage and not and we are talking about not just the education system i mean this this system we had the uh, a lot of conversation in fact globally also conversations happened about how the kerala healthcare system is also well evolved to uh, i mean and again that that didn't happen post pandemic that that setup was there and it it took a lot of years for it to be where it is right so that's that's the that's the story of how this uh, in in our country how the midday meal program for kids are and how it's it's 
it's i mean one can call it a farce as said but at the implemental uh, implemental stage it has failed uh, across across regions except for certain certain pockets like kerala very, very inconsistently of, implemented yes absolutely. very inconsistently implemented right yes. absolutely right lesdin finally in this context of course there is a the question of bringing these two aspects together there is a the question of indian sports persons as well so we do know that indian sports persons are associated with some causes uh, it's not a complete uh, say blank slate there nonetheless uh, it's been a while i think since we've seen say a sports person on a social issue move the discourse to a considerable extent so any thoughts or comments on that so the, through the lockdown I'll, i'll get into the lockdown part of it so the lockdown i happened to speak to some athletes who were involved in a at a local capacity so uh, uh, they would uh, they would help a charity locally or a club which is involved in distributing food or whatever but on a larger scale i don't know what exactly is is the block here but our sports persons they do understand their reach i mean i'm talking about the elite sports persons here cricketers or the Uh, star footballers or even at least like uh, like olympian at olympic athletes like olympic medalists like uh, saina or uh, sindhu or or uh, abhinav bindra or whoever has, has that kind of reach right in the government among the power circles among the power co- corridors among corporate uh, entities and of course the social media so uh, getting uh, rashford into the picture here and he is just a 22 year old kid if you ask ask me and uh, it's 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 an example of what he can do he used football and his football stardom as a platform to do something larger right. uh, so I, i'm not saying that our sports person should get into the mid day meal debate or any uh, anything specific over here but they could make an impact that understanding should should Uh, so i mean they should be aware of that understanding uh, that beyond endorsements of projects or the tournaments that they are part of or uh, any or just retweeting whatever the uh, uh, political uh, uh, overlord say the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the political overlord say overlord say <laughs> so rather than doing all those things uh, just i mean in between that just just use their use their reach for a, for causes which could make a difference and uh, uh, it 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 uh, it would make a huge difference because uh, apart from stars apart from the film stars and apart from the politicians who have sway over people the biggest people who have who have reach among the masses are the sports person right. and imagine a virat kohli uh, at the start of the pandemic getting into this discussion saying that guys look at this we have so many million children who are school going and who are dependent on this midday meal and i happen to understand that it's not happening uh, it's not happening systematically so how can we help them Just start that discussion. He has a lot of corporate brands associated, uh, associated with him. He has reach within the within the uh, political disposition, well, within the within the parties across parties. He doesn't have any party allegiance as such, which is which is great. And uh, so the government, as well as the opposition, as well as I mean any state for that matter, you just uh, he gets involved in that. He starts a campaign, and uh, that would have probably. in the in the in the two in two three months that followed it would have ensured that at least some semblance of of uh, of a project where right. kids benefited from it would have happened but right. but yeah that kind of a will was was missing missing there mm-hmm. and uh, so that's the, uh, at the start we i mentioned that uh, rashford's example and the reach the global reach that he has had with this with this campaign goes beyond uh, just feeding the kids this this is actually a conscience prick if you if i can call it that uh, or a call for action for every one of us right. and that's where this discussion is also happening for within us we are sitting and talking because this i'm i'm answering that call in a way because there is a larger message that was there and larger message applies to all all the countries all of us all all of humanity 
that that happens to be that we should be understanding and empathetic of the needs of the society and this is an important need as well because this addresses the future of of mankind Absolutely. this addresses that healthy citizens are and are getting grown up and and like i said the direct correlation here is that you get a meal you go to school you study that means you get educated citizens for the future right so, absolutely right thank you so much lesley for talking to us on this issue which is uh, ramifications across society and also kind of throws a not very flattering light on indian sports persons and indian sport in general as well that's all we have time for today we'll be back tomorrow with more news from the country and the world until then keep watching news click Thank <laughs> you.